Hi there, I'm Adrienne, a laboratory supervisor here with Scripps. I'm here currently in our core laboratory. It is the Mothership Laboratory. Um, I'm here to show you a little bit about each department in the lab. I'm going to give you a tour. We're going to meet people along the way. I'm going to try and help you understand the difference between a core lab and a hospital lab. And hopefully you walk away with some good info. So let's go. Okay, so a little bit about a laboratory before we get started. The lab team is pretty extensive. So it ranges from pathologists to clinical lab scientists, uh, medical lab technicians, phlebotomists, processors, but we all work together to determine the absence, the presence, or the extent of disease. Um, and after we've done that, given the nurses and the doctors the results to determine the diagnosis, we're still involved in the treatment and how well that treatment is going. So the laboratory is a vital part of, of healthcare and often goes unnoticed. So I'm really happy you're along for the tour. So let's go to the first department. I think when most people think laboratory, they are thinking about microbiology because it is such a cool and popular department. Um, it is a staple in a core lab because a lot of the testing will take a day, three days, five days. So it is again in most core laboratories. Um, I'm here with Christina who's going to tell us a little bit more about a general microbiology department. So we're here in bacteriology, and one of the reasons why microbiology is attractive is that it's different from the other areas because it's more hands-on. Um, there's less instrumentation, and we do a lot of um, puzzle solving in this department. That's some why I like it. Yeah. Um, and I have some examples today of some of the common bacteria that we see. Um, for example, this is the organism that causes pneumonia. Um, and then here I have the organism that causes, it's the most common cause of a urinary tract infection. This is actually E. coli. So um, what we can do with the bacteria is we, again, identify it, and then we also make a suspension using a broth like this and a panel like this. And um, this panel contains several antibiotics. So we can not only tell the doctor what the bacteria is that's causing an infection, but then we can tell them which antibiotics to use to treat the infection. Um, this is one way of doing a sensitivity test. Another way is by doing a Kirby Bauer. And this just kind of shows you some of the different bacteria that we see and another methodology for, again, telling the doctor which oh, drugs to use. Excellent. This is Pseudomonas. Excellent. This is actually two different strains of Pseudomonas. And it smells like grapes. It smells like grapes. Oh, I, uh, they produce pigments. So this one's actually, um, this has pyocyanin in it, which is a green pigment. And this one has a red pigment. So again, that's why I like it. We look for those pigments and the colors and key characteristics to help us identify the bacteria. And I think it's so cool that those organisms stick to the key characteristics. And they do. Yeah. Yes. And then the case is solved. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So this is, again, a bacteriology laboratory, so general. There's lots of layers to the microbiology lab, so let me show you a few more. Now we're in a chemistry laboratory. So I'm here with Joy, and in a chemistry laboratory, it's common between a core laboratory and a hospital lab. A hospital cannot run without a chemistry lab. Uh, general chem will range from electrolytes to tracking a heart attack to liver failure to renal failure, uh, hormone testing, the wide range, right? So if you like to be on your feet, uh, have a knack for troubleshooting, maybe an engineer mind, uh, chemistry is a great fit for you. Um, also, there's allergy testing, hepatitis testing, things like that. So I'm here with Joy that's going to tell us a little bit more about allergy testing. Hi, Adrienne. Hi. So this instrument here will tell you exactly what you're allergic to, like mm -hmm. shrimp, cockroach, and... Oh, I'm yes. always allergic to cockroach. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it, right? Oh. And strawberries, so, oh. yes. Oh. And then I have other two instruments there that we, we run all the hepatitis and cancer tumor markers. Cancer tumor markers, yes. excellent. Oh, that's cool. So it'll pre-determine if you are on your way to a to if having cancer? cancer? Oh, excellent. So it's almost cancers. like a precursor. So we yes. do that testing here. Yes. How many allergens can you test for on this here, instrument? Here, this instrument tests 100 or, or, or more allergens. Allergens. Yes. And it's just off a blood sample? Yes. Oh, very That's cool. Right. Okay, Thank excellent. Thank you, Joy. Yes. Okay, so next apartment we're going to head to, also vital to a hospital lab and a core lab, is hematology, which is my home. 
So now I'm here with Troy, who's going to tell us a little bit more about a hematology department here at a core laboratory. So the main test of choice here in hematology is the CBC. <laughs> we run the CBC on the sapphire here, and if uh, we get any errors on the CBC, uh, like a white cell flag or red cell flag, we have to review the slide. We, uh, we review it on a slide. And then once we, once the slide is made, we will put it over, take it over to the slide bench, and someone on the slide bench will review the slide. Um, they will look for any abnormalities in red cells, white cells. They may have to do a differential, which is actually counting the number of white cells. Uh, uh, specifically 100 white cells, uh, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, basophils, and eosinophils are the five main white cells that you want to concentrate on. Excellent. And then those different populations, do they matter? Uh, yes. So if you have increased number of uh, neutrophils, those could indicate possible infection. Uh, lymphocytes could be, uh, also be infection as well, especially at the very start of an infection. But uh, a super increased number of any white cells could possibly indicate some type of cancer, specifically some type of leukemia. Ooh. Thank you, Troy. No problem. Sounds okay, so now we've gotten to tour a little bit of a bacteriology lab, the mycology lab, molecular, then we're in the hematology, chemistry lab, and you get a little bit of a taste of what a core lab is like. In a core lab, there's lots of volume, lots of routine testing. Uh, more in a hospital lab, it's stat, it's quick, there's a blood bank. So I want to show you a little bit of that. So I'm going to shoot you over to the hospital laboratory. Thank you. All right, and the first stop in our department tour are my departments as hematology, coagulation, and urinalysis supervisor. And as you can see behind us, we have several techs that are working together to help figure out the patient's current status. Uh, first is our hematology analyzers, which we do CBCs where we analyze the white counts, the red counts, the hemoglobin and hematocrit. And based on those values and interpretation, we'll guide the doctors in how to treat the patient with whether they might need a transfusion or how different chemotherapy options are working. And now if you look a little further, you'll see George working on our coagulation instrument. Uh, coagulation is used to help determine how well a patient is clotting or why they're over clotting. Maybe they have a factor deficiency. And so with that is sort of the puzzle that they put together as far as clotting times. And if you look just a little further down, you'll see our urinalysis bench. There we perform macroscopic chemistry evaluations and microscopic evaluations for crystals, white counts, red counts, and bacteria to help guide the doctors in antibiotic therapy treatment or what else might be going on with the patient's kidneys. We also have several manual tests throughout both departments um, with erythrocyte sedimentation, microscopic analysis, um, blood parasite. Um, we do several things and we are very busy here at this lab. One thing we are very excited about is in the next three to six months, both hematology and coagulation will be receiving top of the line equipment, which we are extremely excited about and will make our streamlined process even more efficient. And here we have our chemistry department. The chemistry department at the core lab you just saw in this lab are slightly different in the technology that we have. Here in the rapid response labs at the hospital, we have the Vitros 5600 analyzers, which maintain the micro well, micro tip, and micro slide technology. It's almost as if they have three platforms in one. These analyzers allow for highly proficient, consistent, precise, and accurate results on a timely basis with high throughput specimen counts. As you can see, Joanne behind me is uh, good at maintaining the flow through the analyzers, which is one of the best aspects of, person, uh, of the person who needs to work in the chemistry department. If you can see all the way down there at the end, we have our uh, Vitus Procalcitonin Analyzer. That is new here at the Scripps system and is a great technology for septic patients that come in through. And here we are in our rapid response microbiology department. Here we take patients' blood work that may be septic and we work it up. As you can see behind me, we have our Bactech blood bottle incubators. If those turn positive, we then take those to the fume hood, plate them, and perform a gram stain. Once that gram stain is done being stained, we bring that to our microscope here and we try and identify what type of organism we see. If there is an organism on that smear, we'll take it to our Veragene PCR analysis, which will help identify the organism and uh, initiate an appropriate antibiotic therapy response on a more timely basis. Here we also perform our rapid flu, strep, and several other tests. 
This department helps the generalists maintain their microbiology exposure while still getting exposure to other departments in the lab. Once we do the plating and the blood bottle workup, we send it off to our core lab, Sorrento Mesa, for more expansion. And here we are in the blood bank here at Scripps Mercy. We have several blood bank departments throughout all our Scripps locations. And as a system, our blood bank department serves patients for trauma, open heart surgeries, bone marrow transplant, organ transplant, and oncology in our recent partnership with MD Anderson. We use gel card technology along with our newest technology, OrthoVision. Uh, here at Scripps Mercy, we are a level one trauma center, so we handle some of the worst cases that can come through those doors. The ideal person for our blood bank department is someone that thrives in a fast-paced department that can handle the pressure of making critical decisions in critical time frames. As I mentioned earlier, this is our OrthoVision. This is the latest technology for our blood bank departments here in the Scripps system. This allows us for a highly accurate and more efficient throughput for the better care of our trauma patients, oncology patients, and all the patients that we have to treat here in the blood bank department. So if you're wanting a career in transfusion medicine that will give you general exposure to all elements of blood bank, Scripps is a great organization for you to join. And thank you for joining us on the tour of the Hospital Rapid Response Lab today. I hope you had fun looking at all the different departments that I took you to today. And right now I'd like to share why I chose Scripps for a career path. I chose Scripps because it allowed me to become a better, more knowledgeable CLS and gain a lot of experience in all the different departments you saw today. So if you're excited about a possible career with Scripps as a CLS and you want to join us, I encourage you to go to careers.scripps.org. Thank you.